c'è una magia particolare mentre nevica, cari amici. There is a magical feeling when it snows, dear friends. Snow is, from a physics point of view, phone absorbent material. It absorbs sound waves, so that uh, is the kind of silence that we perceive surrounded by snow. But I don't think it is only this. I believe that there is a silence that is deeper than what science and rationality can explain. When we see snowflakes falling, like now that it is snowing pretty heavily, here in the Dolomites, near Cortina d'Ampezzo, during one of the first heavy snowfalls this year. When we see snowflakes falling, we unconsciously receive this message that something is letting itself fall, something that falls delicately and slowly, silently, without making a lot of noise in the process, for example, as if I let a glass fall. I believe that falling snow arouses in us something that we are often unconscious about, which is a sense of letting go, or of surrendering. And when a snowflake falls, it also turns into water, but sometimes it can accumulate. But imagine one of those nice sand stories, when a snowflake falls into water, imagine it dissolving into water. Or else, imagine a snowflake in the hand of Pier Giorgio, the very hand of this person speaking. It falls on it and you can see it melting on your hand. I believe that silence inspired to us by snow has something to do with our spiritual dimension. And it speaks to us about surrendering, of innocence, of something that vanishes without any resistance. Nell'ultimo incontro in our last meeting, we spoke about a strength that instead of making us something more, it makes us uh, something less. I hope that you have internalized it a bit, because we do really believe that it is the new consciousness of strength. We have seen how this strength does not make us less materialist and more spiritual, but allows us to identify less with the person we think we are. So we could say that whatever detaches us from our personality or from the belief that we are persons and help us to realize that we are something else, that is the real material dimension. It is not what many hypnotized people think, namely to improve whatever pertains to the personal sphere, thus improving the dream rather than waking up. We are able to wake up by simply touching the spirit lightly, without having to improve our dream, and almost paradoxically, when we wake up, we can also help this world improve, simply by what we emanate, with our silent emanation, without guruing, without telling the other how they should live or eat, sleep or meditate, so on and so forth. We talked about it in our last meeting, so I won't keep on insisting about it. In this marvelous place, look at this beauty here. In questa meraviglia, in this marble, I recall Socrates' words, and as we seen in our last meeting, please remember that ancient philosophers were in the service of awakening, not simply great thinkers. Socrates states that wisdom begins with wonder. Wonder is the beginning of wisdom. And I often cite these words during group retreats. By the way, soon we will meet in Rome, Milan, Florence, Verona, and thank you for your presence. In, in these meetings, I often use Socrates' words, considering that many people tell me, oh, it's so nice that what you say, but how do I put it into practice? Well, dear friends, you should not worry about putting your intuitions into practice. In fact, it is enough for you to have real inner clicks intuitions, and they will self-install in yourself. They will naturally become the way you live. The division between theory and practice is typical of conceptual thinking. For example, I love physics, as you know, and in the subject there is a great difference between theoretical and experimental physics. But both are important, even if they are clearly distinct. Theoretical physics on the one hand, and rightfully on the other, the experiments that have to be carried out in laboratories. Anyway, why is there this sharp difference between the two? Since the scientist, the physicist and the experimenter is 
only apparently, uh, apart from their experiments. Let's say they look at it from outside, and therefore scientists and the objects of their experiments are not one thing. And this is how it is in our external dimension. But in the inner dimension, this distinction does not exist. Thus, there is no distinction between theory and practice. And it is sufficient that you have your first inner clicks, so that you can see that the way you perceive your life will drastically change without you wanting to change it. Imagine a child. Imagine telling that child you should behave like an adult. <laughs> From now on, you should be an adult. Obviously, any child could try to imitate an adult, but they want the adults. Now imagine when children grow and mature, even if they don't want to change their way of being, they will spontaneously change. These are inner cliques, my dear friends. By helping us to realize that we are immensely greater than personality, they transform our life and the way we approach everything, even if we don't want to put it into practice, it simply happens on its own, like these snowflakes falling on their own, spontaneously as this marble. It is not my duty to let them fall, it is not my duty to cover these beautiful trees with snow. In the same way, you won't worry anymore about putting things into practice, the nice things that you have seen. <laughs> if you worry, it simply means that you have not really seen them. When you really see these things inside yourself, it is for this reason that we always insist on truly seeing and not believing in something or filling your mind with nice theories. Only when you truly see something, which is being aware of it, that awareness becomes the way you live, spontaneously, even without wanting it. Please, bear in mind this image. Children growing and becoming mature, they cannot simply behave like they used to. They do not ask themselves how to put theory into practice, the theory of being an adult. But by becoming adults, they will behave as adults. Don't worry about putting anything into practice. It will take place on its own. Why do I use Socrates' words? Wonder is the beginning of wisdom. Because in this way we become adults, my dear friends, by becoming aware of marvel, marvelous things, instead of filling our minds with concepts and being able to wonder about things. This wonder is heart-opening. When we say, oh, marvelous, that kind of wonder derives from awareness. It does not come from the ego or the mind. And it is beautiful that Socrates says, wonder is the beginning of wisdom. It is not wisdom, it is the beginning. Why does he say that? By the way, snow is falling from a tree and it is marvelous. Socrates says this because when we begin to wonder about things, we begin to truly learn. In life, we think that we learn, but in fact, we just absorb mechanisms that we tend to repeat like robots. To truly learn requires awareness. One of our beloved Krishnamurti's teachings is called Beginning to Learn, a very beautiful text that I encourage you to read. So when we begin to wander, we start to truly learn. This does not mean to fill our brains with information and repeat them many times, thinking that the more we repeat them, the higher it will be our grade. This is not learning. It is only filling ourselves with silly notions that burden us, making us sort of sausages. Marvel is the beginning of wisdom. When we really start to see beauty, there is something inside that clicks. Something starts to open up inside, and our heart, our being, starts to be vulnerable, without fearing to be fragile, as it manifests its fragility instead of hiding it behind a thick and heavy armor, as we usually do. And only when we expose our fragility, we begin to truly learn, because we are vulnerable to truth. We look around ourselves, and we do not only see trees, snow, and a wolf, or our dear friend Massimo, who is filming now, and that I thank. We look around ourselves, and as much as it might seem absurd, we see that God is everywhere. We look around and see God. That is wonder. And in that wonder, dear friends, 
which is the beginning of wisdom, we really start to learn. And we really need people that are truly able to learn. We need people that are more aware and that emanate a higher consciousness in this marvelous world. You probably remember about Light on a Path, and that part that we have already read together, and it will be a pleasure in our future meetings to interiorize other passages too. Do you remember that sense, sentence saying that before the ear can hear, it must have lost its sensitiveness? Well, it might seem absurd, but in fact, if I try to hear well, ears should be sensitive, and the more sensitive they are, the better I hear. By the way, when one sits silent in the forest, it is not true that snow does not make any sound. It makes a delicate and soft sound. Wonderful. So, when we begin to open our inner doors through wonder, through contemplating beauty, that, uh, oh, as it is marvelous here right now, this openness helps us to lose that sensitiveness in our ears. In what way? In a way that our ears are not only tuned to things in our world, to our personality, to work, or to relationships, or even money, or to things that we really like, or to those we fear. Because through the opening of our hearts to wonder, which is the beginning of wisdom, our ears start to lose sensitiveness to those things. When we lose sensitivity, we choose to feel certain things. It does not mean that we do not hear them anymore, but it means that despite repeating certain things, we begin to feel that they are not related to us anymore, as if they were not influenced anymore. We can work, we can study, we can have great challenges in our daily life, and to the others it might seem that we are living like anyone else, even if what happens around us is not influencing us anymore. This is the meaning of the ears must have lost their sensitiveness. It is as if we do not feel the harshness of those things related to our personality anymore. Before that time, we'd only feel them and could not feel whatever was coming from the beyond, from above or the inner cliques, the voice of masters. Now, through wonder, your ears lose their sensitiveness towards aspects related to personality or the doing of everyday things. We're not escaping from doing. We do not need to hide in a cave or escape in a monastery. We are not influenced anymore. And then, as mentioned, in the light on the path, ears can really begin to listen, losing their sensitiveness. And instead of hearing what is lower, we begin to feel something that was already here, but we could not perceive, since our ears were all caught up in hearing things from our personal sphere only. Now we start to refer to what the light on the path calls the voice of silence or the voice of the master. These are not words like those pronounced while speaking now. It is something we can vaguely realize looking at this snowfall. Observe it quietly. Appreciate its beauty and its subtleness. It is likely that you are not able to hear its delicate sounds, which instead of breaking through silence, makes it even deeper. Guarda questa neve che cade. Look at the snow falling for a bit, quietly. It is not even necessary that you are physically here. Connect yourself to this marvelous thing. In questa meraviglia, cari amici, in this wonder, dear friends, wisdom begins. Since we really start to learn, and our ears really begin to listen. And I cannot learn a lesson if I do not listen to my teacher, if I'm deaf to that teaching. We begin to learn when our ears lose their sensitiveness to low things, which does not mean to deny or consider them inferior. Simply, we do not live for them 
or for our personality anymore. Then, wonder arises that is also in these flakes. But also, no matter where you are now. Dear friends, this form of wisdom comes from ears that are able to listen deeper, having less sensitiveness. This wisdom will arise even more in the new consciousness. Ulysses is also full of snow. I take an opportunity to say that thanks to your feedback and indications that you often send and that we are very thankful for on Instagram or Facebook or also YouTube, since we write on those platforms and you kindly reply. Thanks to your suggestions, we decided to create a new channel in English, which is going to be Pier Giorgio Caselli English, which link is available in the video description below. So to avoid uploading English videos in the Scuola Non Scuola channel, that will be an Italian-only channel, in order to make this channel more friendly for everyone. Dear friend, I would like to conclude this by letting these words run wild within us. And I ask dear Massimo to frame the snow. La meraviglia, dice Socrates. Wonder is the beginning of wisdom, as stated by Socrates. E dice la luce sul sentiero. And following what stated in the light on the path, le tue orecchie inizieranno veramente ad ascoltare. Before the ear can hear, must have lost its sensitiveness. Cari amici, dear friends, with a love and an affection that really go beyond our illusionary distance, we hug you. May this wonder open our heart and let our awareness blossom.